Alright everybody, good evening, getting ready to pick up where I left off with my Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup Beginner's Guide to Minotaur Fighter. So here we are with Bofine, the level 9 blocker of Okawaru, and we're chilling on the ninth level of the dungeon. Got a real nice scarf on. So let's go. Shift X to kind of see the dungeon floor. And looking at the minimap here, um, I can tell that I've explored the whole floor. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, push shift period to find a staircase. Now, here's what I'm going to do. This is the Orcish Mines, okay? And I think it's worth talking about with the Orcish Mines that it's a branch of the dungeon, okay? So there's the main dungeon, which I'm working through at the moment, and that is something that you can explore until level 15 when it turns into the depths and gets significantly harder. Before you get to the depths, there are several sub-branches that open up, like the Orcish Mines. I want to go into the Orcish Mines right now just a little bit for one reason, which is to get plate armor, okay? I'm wearing this um, chainmail armor and um chainmail is good but it's gdr which is um general damage reduction is not that great it plate is much better you could see that um chainmail here has um a base armor rating of eight okay but that equates into um a gdr of let me just see the number here, 34%, um, whereas plate armor is base armor class 10 and has a 39% GDR. GDR is um, just guaranteed, I'm sorry, not general, bleh, guaranteed damage reduction. And so it means that no matter what, if you're hit in melee by a physical attack, you will reduce that attack by this much. Um, and so you want that to be higher the better because we are constantly in melee range, okay? So there are these enemies called orc warriors, and there's other orcs that might have plate, but they are the easier ones that I want to just kind of pick off and see if one of them has a set of plate. Very often they do, okay? Now, the orcish mines themselves are too hard for me right now, uh, especially that, like, I don't want to go down to the second floor. And I can get overwhelmed here. So this is something I need to do carefully. If the situation that I find myself in when I go down these steps is not favorable, then I'm just going to skip this option. But I'm going to see if there's an easy path to some plate armor, okay? So let's go down the steps. And there's Harold, the weathered, all right? He's got a plus zero short start sword. So remember, uh, whenever you see a named enemy, okay, what you want to do is... Take a look at this dude. Right-click on him, all right? He's a middle-aged bounty hunter. Oh, okay. Um, anxious to retire after one final job. Well, Harold, I'm sorry. This is going to be the last job for one of us, you. Um, he hopes to settle down somewhere and live a quiet life with his family. Aw, oh, man, using the money from his final bounty. You, what jerk put a bounty on me? Now... He looks extremely dangerous, which I don't like. And he has um, harpoon shot. Let's read about that. I know. I want to retire him forever. He fires a long and flexible barbed mass. It ensnares me and pulls him adjacent to him or collides with anything blocking the way. Okay, so that's terrible. And then he has sentinel's mark, which... Um, is the same as what the vault people have. 
it announces your presence and location to everyone on the level so like all the enemies will just they don't know I'm here but this will tell them and then they'll all come at me so this guy's a real jerk and I don't want him to pull me off the staircase and he won't follow me up the stairs either so this might just completely obviate this opportunity to explore um, further in here I don't know for sure but that's what it's feeling like all right so here's what I need to do okay I'm just gonna test him out he's gonna want to do that harpoon shot to me so there's no other orcs in view I'm gonna step over here and step over here to remove his line of sight I'm going to wait until I see him by just pushing the S key very slowly he pops into view I'm gonna use heroism okay He's put a net on me, which I don't really care about. And I'm going to see if I can hit him. And I can destroy him. Um, aww. You see that? He's like, my family! To try to make me feel like a, you know, complete jerk. But I don't. Um, because Okawaru is honored by the kill. And he was going to kill me. So, you made poor choices for your family. Don't put this on my doorstep. I'm now level 10. Okay, I chop him up. He didn't really have anything nice, um, but he's dead, and I got some experience. I'm going to rest. Look around. Pushing O to auto-explore. All right, so there's a warg. I'm going to just back this warg over here to a nice safe spot, chop him up, and see what I can find. And I'm going to throw some rocks at this guy just for fun. Ah, he's confused me, which is not fun. Okay, so I'm going to walk back and get back into a safe spot okay so these are the guys i was talking about these orcish warriors they very well might have a set of plate which is the only reason i've come down here okay so i'm going to try to get some plate armor i'm going to um hmm. i'm going to use scatter shot and blast these guys um it did no damage all right so that's sad. I think my, my evocations is so bad that it's just not worth it. I was hoping to just get a lucky hit. That didn't happen. So I'm just going to wait. And now that this guy's in range, I'm going to push A and I'm going to use... That's true. That's true. That's a great point that Fanny's making, which is that like it hit him, but it did no damage. So there's a very good possibility that he's got that sweet, sweet GDR that we were talking about with plate armor. I'm going to use heroism and um, I'm going to push S and let him come to me and just destroy him i'm going to push s kill him and kill him and um the orcish wizard is invisible and he's in front of me i just hit him um he's still there he's really doing well for himself and we'll kill this guy okay two sets of plate not one two fantastic right so, um, I'm going to pick up, they both appear to be plus zero. It used to be the case that you wouldn't know and you would have to try them both on just to see if one of them was magical. I don't know if that's still the case, but they are telling me plus zero as I mouse over them. So I'm just going to pick one of them up and I'm going to just calmly walk up the steps before I put this on. Putting on plate armor and taking off heavy armor takes a long time. So there's, you don't ever want to put it on or off uh, when you're around enemies or the potential of enemies because you can quite literally get caught with your pants down and then they just get to wail on you and you have to make a decision if do you want to continue putting on your armor while they're attacking you or do you want to stop and stand there naked and try to fight them, both of which are bad options. So let's take a look. My armor class is 13, my evasion is 7, and my shielding won't change, all right? I'm going to put on... Well, you know what? I can just show you another smart thing to do, which is to right-click on the plate armor. It tells me right now that its encumbrance rating is 18 and its base armor is 10. And that if I wear this right now, my armor class is going to go up to 15. All right, so it's better and it has better base armor and better GDR, which is what I want. All right. Now, I was um, posing this question on the Reddit of like when is the good time to switch to plate armor if you're melee uh, because of the encumbrance and the way that it hampers your evade and your ability to attack sometimes and pretty much everybody in the thread said 
put on plate armor as soon as you can find it. One guy did say that he tries to have his strength be around what the encumbrance rating is. Well, luckily, this is a Minotaur build. Minotaurs are strong as fuck. And so, um, I have a 23 strength, which is well higher than this encumbrance rating. So I'm going to put this on. Um, and... Now, that's interesting. My armor class actually went up to 16, and they told me it would go up to 15. Um, so I don't know if the tooltip didn't factor in my armor skill. I thought it did. Um, that's odd to me, but whatever. Um, that's fine. So... We are now pimped out in plate armor. Um, I was doing pretty well there on the first floor of the Orgish Mines, so I'm just going to go back down there and scum out a little bit more. There's always the possibility that one of these Orcish warriors has a magical set of plate armor, which would just be... does not account for the gloves that I have. That's possible. Um, or the cod piece that I'm wearing. Um, now... A troll has come into view, and a troll can be quite formidable, so I'm going to pull him back into my little corridor of death that I've etched out for these guys. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Wait. And blast this guy. Oh, there's some troll leather armor there. Um... Oh, I've got the cod and the piece. full shebang okay actually complete side note um and this is totally unrelated so i might have to edit this out but just just you know between you and me uh fading i'm doing this star wars puzzle uh with my kids and there's boba fett like on the puzzle it's a empire strikes back puzzle and we're putting together boba fett and i had this piece to put on that was just his crotch basically and it's just his cod piece like he i never noticed that he had a specific piece of metal on his armor that just protected his junk um and so i was pretty happy i was amused by that it, it's got like a nice decoration on it too like a like a red scarf you know um yeah i mean it is wise he's a smart bounty hunter and those mandalorians know what they're doing when they make some armor they protect the family jewels all right um, anyway, I, I was amused by that. Oh, and another side point before I forget. Have you played, um, I think it's called Planet Zoo. Have you played Planet Zoo? <laughs> it is the way. It is the way. It's like, um, <laughs> it's the first thing when you get your, um, like, uh, best car is to get the, the crotch piece. Um, yeah, I want it really badly. I have it. I'm on Steam, and, and I want it to be go on sale so I can get it. Um, and with my new computer, just, like, try to max out the settings so my animals look unbelievable. I want the best-looking animals possible. Anyway, I'm, it's, it's on my radar. Yeah, set, set aside some... Well, you know what? That's also really smart. You want to protect all of the younglings you know, jewels, because you got to make more Mandalorians. Like, we have a population problem here, right? We got to be fruitful and multiply. And the first step to that is protecting. Okay. So, threat level one, you can't see it. Let me zoom out. He's down in the very corner here, this orcish priest. I'm out. They're like, shouldn't we get a helmet at this point? Or a breastplate? No. More crotch protection. Dude, Planet Zoo's 45. At least the last I checked on Steam, it's 45. That's not with any of the, like, downloadable content, but it's just 45 vanilla. I say just. It's still expensive. No, I want it to be, like, 20 bucks and then or something like that. But Anyway. <laughs> see Darth Vader for examples of this now um, I'm chopping me up some orcs oh here's another guy look at this guy I'm gonna throw a stone at him bring him up here just like 20 layers of cod 
like all the remaining best car in existence. All right, so I'm going to chop this guy up. He's got a, a war axe, you can tell by looking at the graphic there. And I want to see if he's got a magical one. It does say he has a plus zero one, so that kind of sucks. But I was hoping like maybe he would have a really good war axe that I could trade out for. <laughs> I I had no idea. Um, okay, let's look at this plate. Plus zero, plus zero. That's sad. It's all, it's all bad. Okay, let me show you a little trick also. Sometimes when you're in a place like this and you're fighting just a whole hell of a lot of enemies and you're creating a death pile like this, it can be hard and cumbersome to sort through the massive treasure stack that you get. So what I like to do is push Control F um, to search, okay? And then I'm gonna type in War Axe, okay? Just specifically War Axe. And then it'll show me all the war axes that I've discovered. Including the one I have, which is a plus five war axe. And so I know that none of these war axes are any better. Although, why is this one green? What does that mean? Uh-oh. It's Jorg Run. Okay. Jorg Run is actually kind of dangerous um, because he can, like, do earth magic and blow crap up around me and just do ridiculous damage. Um, yeah, I think I might just run away. I'm just going to run. I got my plate armor. There's no reason to botch the run on Jorg Run. Jorg Run, um, yeah, you hear a grinding noise. You see that um, in the corner. I'm going to wait just for one second um, until he comes back into view just so I can show you his tool tip to try to illustrate how much of a bastard this guy is. And when we had somebody um, in the channel yesterday watching the stream, uh, he was talking about threat assessment, and one of the best things that's going to get you far in this game is understanding what's hard, what you can take, and what's going to devastate you. And this guy is way too hard. Now, it's not always obvious with a tooltip, because um, they told me that the family man with the contract for my life um, was extremely dangerous, and I took him out like he was a joke. It all depends on your build and on your gear. Yeah, I mean, and let's look at what this guy has, all right? He's got Iron Shot. He's got Petrify, which would suck. He's got Grasping Roots, which, uh, roots, which would suck, all right? So and remember, you can always look at uh, what he's got. I mean, Andy could just melee me with his, you know, 20 damage plus his quarter staff of Crushing, which is pretty reasonable. So first of all, Let's look at what Fading's talking about with Iron Shot. So push B, hurls a large and heavy metal shot. Okay, that's an extremely dangerous spell. Um, I could reflect that back. Do I have a chance to reflect that back? It's a projectile, right? But the key word is chance. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a chance, and I won't, and he'll hit me for like 40 with that. Um... Yeah, exactly. I could, and then the run's over. There's never, there's no point in gambling. There's no upside to this. He doesn't have, he might have actually a, a cape that I could wear that would be nice. But other than that, his items are probably going to be poop for me. He's just an experience, um, you know, melon. Let's look at his grasping roots. Calls giant grasping roots down that will constrict me. So this means I can't run away. Okay, so this guy could just grasp me, blow me away with iron shot, and the game's over. All right, so. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he could get me right now. It, it was a little greedy. I just wanted to show people the tooltip, but it's, it did risk me. He could also petrify me and then just, you know, um, blow me up. So I'm going to go up the steps. Now, the good thing is, like we were talking about before, named enemies will not follow you up the steps. So we're safe from him up here. He's not coming up. Yeah, exactly. He could turn me to stone and then use his earth magic to blow me up. That's how much of a prick that guy is. So I don't want anything to do with him. He's actually... Yeah, I am sure that named enemies... I mean, they never have. Um, maybe if they're right adjacent to you, but he's not going to just 
come after me now. I don't think that they do. I could be wrong. If you know the answer to that, please put it in the, um, yeah, I don't want that at all. Please put it in the YouTube comments or um, send me a, put it in the chat if you know the answer. Do named enemies follow you up the stairs if they're adjacent? I didn't think that they did. He certainly won't wander off the level he's on, so he's stuck down there. Oh, okay. That's actually immediately who I was thinking of is Dubessa and Dowan. Um, and so maybe that's why they won't follow you up is because they want to stay together. Interesting. All right. Um, you'll see that I have level four piety with Okawaru, which means no new ability, but he might give me some ammunition sometime soon. He might have actually already done that, to be honest. And I just wasn't paying attention. All right. Now we're back to level level 10 here of the dungeon and I'm just using um, O to auto explore and here is a artifact set of leather armor and another ring of magical power it's actually really good for me um, considering I have the uh, the scarf of spirit shield it just gives me more hit points resist positive energy um, or I'm sorry a ring of positive energy is good, but I don't have to have it all the time. I'll put it on if I need it. But for now, I'll just take the extra hit points. Yeah, I mean, resist negative energy is situational, whereas extra hit points are always good. Okay. Threat assessment. These bees are really hard for builds like this because they're fast and they can poison you. Okay, so I'm actually going to go heroic and just try to fight these dudes one on one by one luckily there's a nice corridor of doom for me i'm gonna rest and keep exploring an iguana a hippogriff that's a really good point my mp pool is so limited that there's a chance that i could like get hit and my MP could get so low I couldn't use heroism or an ability like finesse that I want to. So the extra hit points, um, extra magic points will help me do that. That's a good point Fading's making. Yeah, it will be. You're right. Like at some point... Um... Is there a cap for Spirit Shield for how much it's going to protect? I can't remember. Like, is there a point where it will stop pulling from your magic pool, or is it just always already pull that first as your hit points and then take from your hit points? Or is it like 50% from both pools until they're empty? Just splits it? Yeah. Alright, so I'm fighting some yaks, which can hit really hard, but um, I'm strong enough now to just bl completely annihilate them. The fact that I have a 21 shield skill... Um, is just uh, outrageous. Okay. We got a wand of paralysis, which is meh. Gonna probably drop that. Got a pair of gloves. I already have one. Don't need it. Um, let me drop this wand of paralysis. Uh, I'm gonna drop this ring of stealth. I'll never use that at this point. Or I should say it's never going to counterbalance um, how noisy I am as a Minotaur in heavy armor. So it's useless for me. Um, oh yeah, can drop my chainmail. Yeah, good point. Got my plate. I ain't going back now. Um, let me just look at my inventory, see if there's anything else that I'm... Okay, everything else seems fine. Yeah, you're right. You can just bring the monsters to you if you want. I'd go pick up that noise scroll. Yeah, there's... You know, and that's another thing you just learn over time. There are some uses for items that appear apparently useless. Um, let me zoom off the character and just pull up my skill screen to just kind of see where I'm at um, with this. I'm just training maces and flails. 
No, I'm sorry. I'm, tra I'm training axes, armor, and shields just evenly at this point. And that all looks really good. I'm going to start training fighting um, to get some more hit points. Um, and then let me just try to remember... Will unarmed combat help me get more headbutts? You know, I think it will, but I can't recall because the headbutts that you get as a minotaur are retaliatory. And so it's like they're just counterattacks. So I don't know if that would proc with unarmed combat. It's also not super valuable because I don't think the damage on my headbutt scales up unless my horns like sharpen somehow, which I don't I don't think they do. I got that little pair of horns. Okay. Ooh, we got some monkeys. Monkeys. Chop up the monkeys. Alright. I got some boomerangs. Um, oh, okay, so I got some spells from picking up the book. Fine. Oh, two-headed ogre. That's hard. Anything I want to do to this guy from far away? Not really. I'm just going to go heroic now and throw. All right. Okay. Okay. Easy enough. Easy enough. That two-headed ogre again, he could get a big-ass hit on you, uh, but he didn't. Man, how did I sneak by these crocodiles? What's wrong with you, crocodile? Yes, centaur! Let's bring this guy up here. Crocodiles hit really hard, by the way. They're, they're always annoying. Anything that's just like a animal type in this game is much harder than you would think it would be. Oop, centaur. I'm just gonna wait. Hi, buddy. Did you see what happened? Woo, look at all these animal types. Oh, so these attacks do not receive any benefit from your unarmed combat skill. Okay, it's based upon such factors as the particular limb involved, your innate and acquired mutation in certain equipment. Oh, okay, so slaying would make my headbutt do more damage, but does strength make it do more damage, or is that not accurate? Okay, well then, I'm not going to train it. It looks like I'm not training it, right? Oh, okay. So it's going to do 5 plus 6. Um, or it's going to roll f between 5, or, you know, somewhere like 1 to 11 or whatever. Um, ooh, here we go. Look at this. Trog is, or I'm sorry, not Trog. <laughs> I uh, hope you didn't hear that, Okawaru. Let's, uh, that was a little Freudian slip there. Um, Okawaru grants me armor. It's another scarf! Yep. What kind of scarf is this? Cloud immunity! We know this! I'm gonna keep that around. It's good for situations. Alright, so... Um, Okawaru, you can see now my piety is level 5, which means I can use, um, oops, let me zoom out, Finesse. Finesse is basically, um, my ability to attack much faster, like twice per round. It, it scales down, um, based on how fast your weapon speed is with your weapon skill. Like, it, it start, it has diminishing returns at some point. But anyway, for now, it's amazing. However, I have a 61% failure rate with this, which means I need to start training invocations to get a little bit better with this. 
I don't need to get perfect with it, but I want it to be reliable. And right now that is not reliable. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to die if I don't kill this guy really fast and then try to use that and then waste a turn. Um, oops, something hit me that's invisible. Okay. Um, yep, I can see it uh, blinking around here. All right, I'm just going to stand here and hold control until I kill everything. Um, I got it. I got the invisible thing by just holding control. If you hold control and you push a direction, you attack in place. Um, and with my axe, remember, I'm cleaving in a, you know, a circle around me like Link with his sword uh, when you power it up. But in a hallway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, let's open up our skills then and turn off fighting now and turn on invocations. And I want to try to get um, my finesse to like 20%, something like that, that's more reasonable. I mean, ideally I would get it below 10, uh, but we'll see. Now, um, this is extreme forward planning, but generally in games like this, um, I go for extended, and at some point when I'm going for extended, like if I'm going to take out the tomb or around about that part of the game, if I need to deal with the abyss and mutations and things, I switch gods uh, to either the Shining One or Zin. And so um, having good invocation skill is better for those gods because they have more god powers. So it's not going to hurt me to train up my invocations Oh, uh, Fading saying, he's so far in his run that he's got going that he's thinking about switching gods. What god are you and what god are you thinking about going to? Wow. Yeah. I find that the most annoying things for late game are the undead in the tomb and mutations. And... Ah, so you want to go Gozag just to buy some stuff, spend the gold, and then, um, oop, the Basilisk just petrified me. Uh, I get you. That's a good point. 12,000 is a lot of gold, and no shops is a bad situation. That's worth it. Okay, um, so here's what's happened. I've been petrified by this Basilisk, okay? Um, and so you can see the little debuff here. It's red, which means it's, like, wearing off. It doesn't last for very long, but what it does while I'm petrified... Uh, my armor class goes down, my evade is sapped, and my shield is completely offline. So, um... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. It's red not because um, it's weakening, it's because it hasn't gone off yet. I was wondering why I could move. So I'm just going to move back here, um, and I'm now I'm stone, okay? And he's just biting me while I'm stone, but he can't hit me. And now I'm back. I'm going to go heroic and just beat the crap out of that guy for doing that to me. Um, plus zero plate armor. I will point out, I'm an axe wielder, okay? And so this is a battle axe. A battle axe is an extremely powerful two-handed weapon. It does a lot of damage. And there are some very tempting, like, executioner's axes, which do an outrageous amount of damage that might, like, make you feel like using that. But I always advocate shield instead. What is this guy blasting? He has a wand of acid and he's corroding me. God, I just died to this. Let's not die again. All right, I'm going to finesse um, and just chop this guy up. Yeah, see, I mean, centaurs are normally a joke to me, but because, um, that guy, uh, had a wand of acid, he was just obliterating me. Yeah, he had a, um, okay, so let me just take a moment to collect myself here, um, and see what's going on. My axe is minus three. So, I'm going to switch to my Evening Star. Oh, that's complete crap. It's corroded too. Um, I kind of thought that because the Evening Star was in my backpack, it wouldn't be corroded. But it is. It's a blanket debuff. That sucks. So, I wasted a turn doing that. I'm going to switch back then. Um, and I'm going to... 
I'm just gonna drink a potion of might to finish this guy off so there's no more shenanigans, okay? And I'm gonna run away um, and let my corrosion wear off, okay? I should be pretty safe right here and I'm no longer corroded. I'm just gonna rest, rest, pushing five. Oh my God, okay, I'm gonna push five until I can rest and I'm good, I'm back to normal, okay? Um, you said the centaur had a nice axe or he had that wand? Um, Yeah, no, it's just a battle axe. Um, okay. Yes. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Um, yeah, very good. I'm going to go pick it up and, and examine its base damage. Yeah, oh my god, it used to be the worst. Um, Fading is referencing an earlier version of this game. And in earlier versions, when you got corroded, it was just permanent, unless you could get rid of it somehow. And so it really made artifact items, which can't be corroded, premium. Like, more premium than they already are, because they were immune to that. And you would just often use a, a, a less optimal artifact item just because it couldn't get corroded. Okay, um, I'm bouncing rocks back at this guy, which amuses me greatly. Alright, let's walk into him. Another rock just bounced back right at this guy. And that's dead Cyclops. All right. So let's take out his uh, broad axe here. All right. Um, so let me zoom out and right click on the tooltip for this. Um, yeah, you're right. It's the strongest base damage. Um, great. I'll pick this up and I'll save this for later. Okay, so I'm going to put this in my bag and see if I can get either a scroll of enchant weapon or a scroll of like Vorpalize or brand weapon or something like to that effect. Um, here is a flail of protection, which is tempting, but it's plus zero, um, so not worth it. Ooh, a treasure trove. What do you want? Hopefully you want a strawberry because I got plenty of those. What you need? What you need? All right, so you go to the treasure trove. All right, and you try to step inside. And then you just need plus four fire dragon scales. All right, so um, what we're gonna do then is sandbag scrolls of enchant armor to get fire dragon scales up to plus four if we ever find any. So I've got one enchant armor on me, so we'll just keep looking for more, okay? So what you wanna do is just remember, um, I was trash talking treasure troves and then Fading showed me one of his recent pulls from a treasure trove, and now I'm just like, anytime I can get one to get inside, I want to do it. They have um, usually really, really high requirements, but they're worth it. So let's try to get it. All right, I'm going to bring this ogre up here and just destroy him and chop him up. Um, just to, to point this out, I've only been trading invocations a little bit, and... My failure rate has already gone down from 61% to 43%. So it's really not that much of an investment you need to put into something like finesse um, to have this happen. So I'll show you even what it is. My invocations is now just skill level two, okay? So that's a huge uh, increase in reliability. Man, this guy is boomeranging me to hell and back. All right, I'm going to back up into this hallway then so this doesn't happen anymore. And I'm going to uh, look at what's fighting me. I'm going to stop. And again, that's one of the best things about this game. It can be um, very much that, you know, you're predisposition to just keep going and, and, and get caught up into the, the fury of the game and, and the frenetic pace of just like all these enemies and start chopping them up and just go into a berserk rage. But remember, you can just take your hands off the keyboard and off the mouse and nothing is happening. And you can look. All right, so let's zoom in and look. We have a hound, which is a joke, a very injured orc warrior, which is easy, a white, which can be hard, depending on what weapon he has. They, they have, like, crappy armor, but they could have a weapon that's really, really powerful. Luckily, it, he appears to be wielding a plus zero flail and a plus zero robe, so he sucks. And an orc. 
So I'm just going to stand here and start shopping. And if things go sideways, um, I'll use heroism. But this shouldn't be too bad. It wasn't bad. All right. Let's run. Another white. I'd really like uh, a white to have a good axe. That would be nice. Okay, let's move back. We've got a lot of guys coming at us at this point. Um, here comes this wraith. And... Yeah, he drains you a little bit, but that's fine. I don't... That's not something I'm too concerned about. He didn't get a drain on me. Um, ooh, well, of course. His weapon is a draining weapon. That's fine. Drain is just annoying, but it it's such a minimal hit to my skills that it's not a big deal, and it's already gone. I've already got enough experience to get it off. So that's how you get rid of drain. If it ever happens to you, you just kill crap. And it goes away. Now, we're dealing with pretty minimal drainers here. We could get into a spot where there's a whole bunch of people draining me. And, you know, that might be disastrous. But for the time being, this is easy peasy. Alright, so let's look around and keep exploring. Alright, so we got a an ant. Oop, oop, okay. This is one of those times where, like... You kind of wish the game had sound effects, but it doesn't. Um, something is hitting me. Oh, I picked up a book with Summon Butterflies in it. Um, okay. Yeah, Summon Butterflies, you mean just the fact that you can use it to block enemy attacks? What Summon Butterflies can do is put a whole bunch of butterflies out. And you, you can use it as an escape method. Um, by blocking line of fire and causing enemies to um, get cock blocked out of the way and you can then run. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I could even in, with my build of just being um, a minotaur potentially cast that spell. I will say I have a five intelligence, um, but it's possible. It's a, You're right, it's a level one spell, so it should be something I can do. Now, what I meant about the sound effect was, look down here in the lower left in the text box at the red. The worker ant comes into view, no problem, but then something hits me and my auto pickup has been deactivated. Whenever you see that, that means there's an invisible jerk around here, okay? Um, oh, and he's right here because I was trying to go into this hallway and I can't because he's on me. So I'm just going to keep swinging at him and also hitting the um, ant. Oh, that's right, because you could swap places freely with your allies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you you build up a nice um, human butterfly shield. This was a great example of axes, because what happened there was... Um, there's a bunch of unseen horrors on this level, and orcs as well, but... I have an axe, and so I'm just hitting everything around me, um, in addition to the unseen horror. Okay, we got him. Let's rest. Let's rest. Let's rest. Let's rest. Okay. Oops. Um, we got an unidentified scroll. Well, let's read it. Hey, it's a scroll of summoning. Look, I got some buddies. Okay. Um, so, just as a, a heads up, if you get a scroll of summoning... These are used in very much the same way that Fading's talking about with um, the fact that you can, like, I can, if I push up, my snake will go where I was, and now the snake is engaged with the enemy, and it gives me an extra turn to run away, okay? I can push up again and switch with the frog, and now he's in the way. Granted, they'll probably get one shot, but that's, you know, all I need is just that extra turn to run away, Okay. It can mean the difference between life and death, between Zot winning and me winning. Now, the other thing is, if you push T when you have allies, you can give them orders. That means T is like shout, you can yell. And usually what you wanna do is um, push uh, A to attack a new target, and then you can like select what you want them to attack, or you can have them stand there and guard the area or you can like tell them to stop attacking or run away or follow you or whatever so you can give them commands they don't always follow them to a t don't rely on it necessarily but it's 
Much better than just um, blind AI. All right, so let's kill this griffin and eat him. I'm sorry, hippogriff. Hey, it's the lair. Okay. Um, so the lair is probably where I'm going to go next. I don't have resist poison at the moment, which sucks. But I don't have actually resist anything at the moment, which sucks. Anyway, let's kill all these guys. See if they have anything cool. Not really. Not really. Okay. Hey, let's keep exploring then. Just pushing O to explore, pushing tab to butcher everything. There's Zin. That's good to know for later in the game. Alright. Just as a heads up too, if you are interested in switching gods, or if you haven't found yet the altar that you are looking for, maybe you have and you just didn't notice, you can push Control F and then type in um, altar, and then it will show you all of the different altars that you've discovered so far and you can go there and you know worship them or do whatever you want so you can see what you found just in case you forgot all right uh let's scum let's just dip our toe into the uh layer see what we got so i'm going down the steps and i'm killing the porcupine and i'm resting and i'm exploring and now i'm hungry so can somebody give me some food Why didn't I pick up this book of battle? Why is it grayed out? Because I'm not smart enough? Or did I already know it? Oh, okay. It was grayed out because nothing new. Okay, I was wondering. I was like, what's up with that? Oh, oh, okay. All right. These guys, swamp worms, real jerks. Don't fight them. Especially not in the water. Generally, you don't want to fight anything while standing in the water. Um, it's just not a good plan. So don't. Crocodile man, do you have any food for me? All right, crocodile flesh. Okay, I'm gonna make some boots out of you. I wish I could. Oh, Aklab. All right, so this is an excluded area because this guy wants to shoot me. However, these bushes will protect me, right? I can walk in here, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do it as a sample. Yeah, this is a hilarious moment where he's actually... They won't protect me? Looks like they are. Are they not? I'm gonna... Oh, you're right. Nope, he decided to shoot. Okay, then let's get the hell out of there. Okay, then, never mind. Oh, yeah, it's trees that you can't... That will protect me. Okay, so... What's annoying about that... Is that unless I have, like, fire or something... Even if I wanted to melee down that Aklab plant... I'd have to chop through those bushes first to get to him... Which takes time, and he'd just be blasting away at me. Corroding me. Aklab plants... Yeah, I could. I could try to see if that works, just as an experiment. Use my wand of polymorph to see if I can change him into something easier. Um, I'm gonna say yes to walk into this area, and I'm just gonna see if I can hit him. Oh. So, my wand hits the bush, but his thing goes through and hits me. That's too bad. Yeah, not fair. Okay. All right. Oop, Hydra. Okay. So this is one of those times when we switch to this evening star that we picked up earlier, right? Um, the evening star is a mace. Hydras don't like maces, okay? Now, remember, although I haven't used a mace the entire game, luckily, my mace skill is actually pretty decent because it synergizes with axes. It's like a... I mean, I guess I'll use the word subsidiary of axes, and so just by training axes, I get a little bit of strength in the green skills, maces and flails and pole arms. So I'm pretty good with this. Good enough to kill this Hydra, anyway. And I can give myself a boost with Okawaru by using heroism. And now look, I'm down to actually only 30% failure on finesse, which I can use too if this gets out of hand. So I'm going to um, throw a rock at him, and I'm going to go heroic. You always want to go heroic or go berserk or whatever it is when the enemy is one tile away from you. So that takes a turn. And then when they get on you, you have the benefit. And I'm just swinging my big old um, evening star at him. And ooh, Okawaru has decided to give me something again. And it's another scarf. 
I am on scarf fire, okay? They are, I am a fashionista this run through. Dude, I'm set for winter. I'm set for, you know, um, hopefully this is like a Gryffindor scarf or whatever. I'm, I'm all decked out. All right, so let's pick up the scarf and switch back to my axe and see what kind of scarf this is. Um, ooh, it's a scarf of repulsion. Um, now, does this stack with my other reflect? I mean, it's giving me this um, resist missiles, so it's like I'm basically Im immune to ranged attacks almost. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'm going to wear that. Well, actually, God, that's a good question. Is it worth losing 31 extra hit points? The question is, does it slap spells aside that, that count as projectiles or only fired projectiles. Yeah. Eh, it's not worth it then. It's funny. Maybe in the Elvish Halls or something like that, it's worth it. But for here, I need the hit points, so I'm gonna go back to this. Now, it is worth mentioning with, um, Spirit Shield. Notice that um, my magic points have gone down to zero. And you have to actually wait for them to get back up to 31 before that, you know, before my um, spirit shield can take the damage. That is built into the game to prevent you from exploiting the fact that you could just put that scarf on when you want it and use something else. So you can't do that to um, use your magic points or to fill up your magic points. It takes them all away if you. Uh, put it back on. So just remember that you can't just throw that on um, and be in Fat City. You gotta wait. So it's better to be wearing it now. Now I did get a scroll of enchant weapon right there and there's an argument to be made to start buffing up my um, broad axe which is base damage 13. Um, and I, I think that that's a, oh, okay, yeah, and, and Fading's bringing up a good point, which is that, like, let's say you're starting to get wailed on, and you want to make sure that you have enough magic points to use Finesse or some other god ability that you have, you can take the scarf off, and it does not take your magic points down to zero when you take it off, only when you put it on, so that way you can preserve some magic points if you have to cast something. Now, I'm going to save my Scroll of Enchant weapon right now and not use it on my Broad Axe because it's not enough of an improvement to make me switch weapons, and there's a very good chance that I get an axe that has a brand that I want to use that Enchant weapon on instead. All right. So here's a uh, Worm Man, um, but he's outside of the water, so he's much easier for me. I'm just flying around killing some snakes what do we got what do we got what needs to die everything okay um i am poisoned so i'm just gonna rest rest until the poison wears off and ooh, this guy just came into view but he's not too bad and i can eat him up and i'm gonna kill this guy Ooh, i'm level 12 fantastic um God. I agree. That's why I'm hesitating. I normally would just snap strength this, but it's time that my character is turning a corner and getting ready for more difficult content to actually raise up my intelligence. I hate to do that. Ooh, but I got a strength anyway from my um, every uh, four levels stat random. So that's good. Yeah, I need to have my intelligence be around 10, so this is fine. What did that guy do? Did he bring me toward him somehow? Yeah, he has harpoon shot. Huh, did they always have that? It feels like a new thing.
It's new? Yeah. It feels like it's new. All right, I'm going to stand here and just hit both of these guys at the same time. Just ruin their day. Ooh, a ring. Great. Um, okay, partly explored. Well, before I do anything, I'm going to go over here to the land. And I will... Um, take off one of my rings and put this on. And it's protection from magic. Okay, that's really nice to have. Um, what does this give me magic resist wise? Jesus Christ, I'm terrible with magic resist. Um, so that's very nice if there's some enchanter type enemies out there that are trying to charm me or put me to sleep or some other type of effect that I need magic resistance from. So I'll save it. That's cool. I hear a distant snort. Ooh, there's a gauntlet on this level. Well, let's look for it. Yeah, that's true. Hey, shoes. My first pair of shoes. I got a new pair of shoes, everybody. And look at that. These shoes, because of my armor skill. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So, Fading is now making the case for permanent magic resist being more useful than the 10 extra hit points because... I have so many hit points. I'm already a Minotaur, so yeah, I will put this on just to save my ass from being confused or uh, otherwise beguiled by something. Here it is. Okay. You know what's funny is um, I'm so used to playing Might and Magic that I... Bef Right before I went into this gauntlet, I was about to push tab S to, like, save the game. And I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, that's right. I'm playing Dungeon Crawl. There is no save. You just either make it or you don't. All right, so let's go into a gauntlet, everybody. What's a gauntlet all about? All right, let's explore and find out. So, um, yes, okay. Um, the nature of this place prevents me from teleporting. Okay. Um, marking areas unsafe for traveling. Okay. Found three transports. So, do the transports reliably take you into, like, is it intuitive? Like, this guy is going to take me here? Or is it just random? Like, I don't know which where this transporter is going to take me. Do I get to make my choice? Or is the choice I choose the path? Okay, cool. Um... Well, dexterity ring, a bunch of bees. Ooh, look at these magical boots. Those look cool. Oh, man. Magical cloak. Sweet. Yeah, they are bad without resist poison. I honestly don't know how much, if anything... Ooh, some... Yeah, um... More magical boots... But the only way... Yeah, the artifact boots are really, really good. But the problem is this. Like, I, do I want to fight these jerks? The Chaos Spawn can mutate the bejesus out of me, right? But I can't even get here without clearing this room, correct? So, um, my question is... It corrupts everything that it touches, okay? Okay. Um, which I don't want to ever have happen. This guy, uh, yeah, see, he, but this guy brain feeds, and I have a shit intelligence. I'm kind of not happy about that. Um, and he mutates me, which sucks. So this guy's gonna mutate me and try to feed on my brain. Um, yeah, I could go in hard. I could drink a might potion. I could go in with finesse and heroism and just let the chips fall where they may. Um, God, is this worth it? Well, hey. 
this is a risk reward situation okay and what can i get from this in this gauntlet you get to choose one path i think it's worth exploring all the other paths just to see what gear i can get the, the paths that you can choose um are surrounded by translucent walls which allow you to look inside okay um and what I'm going to do is just compare the loot. So these are um, artifact boots, okay? I know they're artifact because of the uh, graphic. You get good enough in this game to understand, like, when an item is an artifact. Um, and artifacts are what you want. This cloak is good, but these guys are jerks and they smite, which is my nemesis, okay? Um, are there really only two paths that I can take? Yeah, there's only two. Unless I'm not seeing this right. Hmm. What's this up here? What is this stuff? Do you know what, like, can I get up here? Or, oh, the Minotaur? Hmm, okay. Well, um, I'm more comfortable To be perfectly honest, this way, this many of these guys that can smite could and heal them each other is just not worth it to me. So I'm going to try going this way. All right. So before I go in here, ooh, and he's standing right there. What if I, can I just run through and not fight them? Can I just like go up here and just leave him behind like if I drink my haste potion can I run past him and just go right for the bees there's nothing in here that I want yeah I could be a coward about this let's be a coward about this um okay so I've got three potions of haste okay so let's do this in the right order so first of all I need to eat so nothing messes up because of that second I'm going to go heroic because that's the um the first thing that I don't mind wearing off. Then I'm going to go finesse. Finesse until I use it. I'm going to drink a might potion and I'm going to drink a speed potion. I'm going to go in. And I'm just going to step up, step up, and go through. And go through. And chop up some bees. Oop. Hey, 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 hey. Sorry about that. Oh, I don't need the magic resistance. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, I'll need it against these wizards. Um, and I'm not going to be able to re restore my stuff fast enough. And I... Yeah, exactly. I'm going to use a potion of curing to get rid of my... Um, poison. I'm actually going to uh, rest because all of my buffs are off, except for my Potion of Might. And I'd rather just have full hit points. Boy, they're really gesticulating at me, getting angry. All right, so I will appear here. I have to get this. So I'm gonna do the same kind of thing, except, um, well, let me let me verify that his spells lightning bolt is awful. Um, banishment would be terrible. Crystal spear, Jesus, these guys have a bunch of spells that are awful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to keep the magic resist on just in case. I don't want to get banished. That's the end of the run, most likely. So, here's what I do. I don't like doing this.
but I'm going to use some items just to increase my survivability. Ah, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. It doesn't make enough of a difference. Um, I'm not going to use my... I was going to use my scroll of enchant um, weapon and enchant armor, but I, I don't think that's going to be the difference, and I'd rather save those. So what I'm going to do is stand on the teleporter. Idea potion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good idea. Um, let's check these out. Uh, three potions of agility. Well, why not, right? Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to push A to become heroic. I'm going to push B to become finessed. Drink the might potion. Drink the agility potion and go in. Okay. Yeah, they're squishy. Yeah, I know. The axe really just came through right there where I just chopped the crap out of all those guys. I want to just make sure that they're all dead before my buffs wear off. I think they are. We cleared it, right? I don't see anything. All right, great. So we get a scroll of teleport, which is no small thing. That's fantastic. Scrolls of teleport save your life. All right, and let's just check out these boots. What kind of boots did we get? Well, better than what we had, and they give us plus nine magic points, so that's fine. That's not bad, right? Um, pretty decent. So at this point then, do I have to fight the Minotaur? Okay. All right, Minotaur, let's do this. Is it immediate? Oh, the staff, right. Um, okay, I'm going to push A and I'm gonna go heroic for my new look, yeah. And I'm gonna wait until I see the Minotaur. Where is this dude? Oh, he has a chamber, okay. Um, I'm okay. Alright, I'm gonna open the door, and he's trying to shoot at me. I'm gonna step out of here so he can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna wait until he's here, and I'm gonna go finesse, and I'm gonna go heroic, and... I'm just gonna chop this guy. What did he hit me with that did so much damage, by the way? Let me just... He just gored me? He hit me from afar. Let me, um... Let me look at what he blasted me with there. Wow, he headbutt me! This is the battle of the headbutts. It's Minotaur v Minotaur. He tried to headbutt me, but he did no damage. Um, I blocked him, he gored me, but it did no damage. I sliced him. It's his silver javelins. He just javelined the crap out of me there. Jesus, yeah. Alright. And what is this? Minotaur zombie? Okay, let's just kill this thing. Alright. Is this... He had nothing? He had plus zero chainmail on? Ooh, 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 ooh. Jeweled War Axe! Jeweled War Axe! Artifact War Axe! This could be it! This could be... And another scarf for my collection of scarves. Alright, let's see how good this Jeweled War Axe is. This glowing grape mace is interesting. Um, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. Okay, now. Um, I'm going to put on the axe and see what's up with this. Uh, do you see this? Plus 11? War Axe of Chopping? <laughs> it has no downside. There's nothing bad. There's nothing bad. This is a game breaker for this particular Minotaur. Bofine has made the big time by killing another Minotaur. Plus 11 War Axe of Chopping 
It gives me resist poison, which I had to have. I didn't have it. Resist fire, which is amazing. Yeah, I know, he should have been using this. And stealth, which the stealth sucks, but this is a plus 11 freaking weapon. This is outrageously good. And I'm gonna just casually... That's right. He was like, I can take this other stupid Minotaur with a scarf without my axe. I'm just going to javelin him to death. And it bit him in the ass. All right. So let's drop this broad axe, this plus five war axe. Let's check out the scarf. And... What, it's another one? It's just the same thing? Yeah, you're right. I should. Um, I'm going to get these javelins as my ranged weapon of choice. Pick these up. Drop all these rocks. I have to decide based on looks. Yeah, you know what? There's so many times... That's a funny point, but it's a true point. There's so many times in this game where, like, at the end, where I have my stash, I have a whole bunch of treasure, and I have, like, five pairs of boots that all do the same thing or five shields or something like that, you better believe I decide based on the graphic on the shield. Like, is it the checkerboard pattern? Is it this one that has, like, the, you know, the eagle or whatever on it? Anyway, um, amusing. All right, let's drop these boots. And let's look around at what we're wearing item-wise. I think we're pretty good. Got some extra wands here. I should really just start using these Scrolls of Enchant weapon on my my Evening Star then, just for as my Hydra killer. Because, um, just as a heads up, if you're a newer player, artifacts like this one are pimp. They're the best things you can get in the game because they can have more than one brand on them. Also, they can get enchanted in terms of their damage plus higher than a regular item. Like, for example, um, this guy can only be enchanted to plus nine he's a regular item and this can be enchanted based on i don't know what the ceiling is but this is high as hell 11 is high as all oh, get out um so i'm gonna use these on my evening star in case i have to fight a hydra and it just makes me a little bit better um okay all right, well, that was definitely worth exploring, okay? I feel really good about that. Man, these Minotaur zombies hit pretty hard. They're no joke. Got some gold, and we got some stories to tell. Um, let's go. We're good. Oh, what'd we get? Teleportation scroll? Alright, cool. So, we're now at the point, especially because I have resist poison. Ah, crappy shoals. I was really hoping not to see that branch. The shoals are a branch that's very, very hard because the enemies will try to lure you into the water and kill you, among other things. That's a fair point. If I could go berserk, that would definitely be the case. Fading is making the argument that the axe is so strong that I don't even need to switch weapons. And I'm not, you know, opposed to that idea. This looks like it's a snake pit situation down here, maybe. It is a swag move. Snake pit is cool. I'd much rather take that than the shoals. Although, you know me at this point i'll try to clear them all eventually but all right i mean i'm just looking at this over here and artifacts are such crazy items because they have the potential to be really strong but they're totally random and so they also have the potential to be complete junk and usually you have to balance some kind of minus with a positive like they'll they'll hit one area of you but overall it's still good this is one of those few times um 
where there's no downside to this weapon. Just amazing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Fading's making a good point. I need to be able to fly so I don't have to worry about getting pulled into the water and drowning because drowning is just a, such a sad way to die in this game. Doesn't matter what your health is at. You just go under the water and you are dead. See that? That's a tab. That was a tab city with an axe. So what I'm doing is just pushing O to explore, like always, and then I'm being a little frivolous and just chopping the crap out of things. Ah, Okuwaro gave me some chainmail, which it does have a brand. It's worth investigating to see how good it is. Yeah, that's true. Now is when the game kills me. The game giveth and the game taketh away. Like, you get an item that you feel is overpowered you start to feel strong you start to feel good you know you pop your collar you know you're just a flick and dirt off your shoulder and then all of a sudden you're dead um and so what you want to do is stay humble you know keep within yourself or the game will kill you i'm going to check out this chainmail plus zero chainmail of magic resistance it's garbage yeah exactly to be honest, too, I have forgotten to uh, alter the config file to help me with my damage resistance. I'm sorry, with my auto battle stop, It's and it's still at 50%. Hey, Fading, do you know the um, YouTuber who goes by the name of Quill, like Quill18 or whatever? Okay, anyway, he, he came into the Reddit thread and was talking, and I was watching him on one of his videos, and he sets the auto battle stop life percentage at 80, and I usually do 70 or 75, so he's even more conservative. Um, and right now I'm at 50, so that's one of the things that can kill me. I need to definitely do that so I don't lose the run to this. This is a six-headed Hydra, by the way, um, and so I'm going to switch to my newly enhanced Evening Star and just take this guy back here. Remember... Never get too confident. I want to fight this Hydra in a more private location, a more intimate setting, because I don't want anybody to pile on. I'm going to push S and just wait for him to show up, and then I'm going to go heroic and then just bash him down. He's dead. And I'm going to rest. And I'm going to put on my axe and keep exploring. All right, so here is a basilisk, and he wants to petrify me, so I'm going to step back here and step down here and step here to severely limit his line of fire and his chance to petrify me from afar. All right, so here we go. Okay, this is worth mentioning. These are death yaks. Remember I've said yaks are hard. They hit hard as trucks. Death yaks are even deadlier, okay, as the name suggests. It's not false advertising. So I'm gonna go to this square. This square means that somebody can only fight me here. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Fading is bringing up a good point. Sometimes when you get to a big, like, XP pinata, like an enemy like this, you want to push M and look at your skills and see if everything is something that you want to dump experience into. And actually, I might be okay turning invocations off at this point. Let's see what my chance to fail is. It's 11 on Finesse. No, I think I'll get it down to about 5% and then I'll turn it off. Okay. Let's kill these guys. They did hit me. I mean, you know. Oop. Accidentally stepped into their game by holding down tab. By just being the, uh, you know. Greediest bastard in the world that I am. Okay. Let's rest. Let's get our hit points back. Let's push A and we're down to 9% failure on finesse. Almost to where I'm just going to turn invocations off. Oh, and I don't have re resist electricity. And this is a electric eel. Um, electricity hits really hard. It can hit for nothing or it can hit really hard. And it can bounce off electric, or I'm sorry, stone walls or any kind of um, reflective surface and then hit you again. So he could like blast me and then it comes back and then I'm dead. Probably not dead, but just more damage than I want to deal with. They also have an insanely long line of fire with that. And I see no reason to go over there. So, electric eels are one of the few enemies that I 
um, don't violate my, or I'm sorry, that violates my normal policy of scumming and killing all the enemies on the floor. I'm, I'm not going to go up there and see if there's anything worthwhile. I'm just going to eat some bread. I'm just going to say something, by the way. Yesterday when I was playing, this bread was strawberries. It switches each day? Like, each time I log in, like when I when I log off and log back on or whatever and boot up the game, it switches the uh, graphic? That's interesting. It's not set for an entire playthrough. Just a little observation. All right, I'm going deeper into the layer, so, so things are getting harder. Let's see if our axe is still up to the task. Let's see what's in here behind these rune doors. It's a big ghost and a artifact uh, short sword, which is turds for me. So the only thing he could be is experience if I wanted it. Hey, a potion of cure wounds. Awesome. I'm sorry, heal wounds. Oh, and he froze me. Let's get out of here. <laughs> All right. Let's beat the crap out of that guy. Oh, it's a Komodo dragon. All right, come over here, Komodi. I'm going to put you down to Komodo. Komodo dragon. All right, let's... Oh, oh God. Yeah, this is a greed moment where um, the basilisk came from far away and turned me to stone. And, you know, luckily there was nobody else, but that's one of those moments when you could just die because you're being a dork like me with an overpowered axe and just tabbing in unexplored areas of layer three. Let's, let's just take a, a moment to chill and stop doing what I'm doing so that I don't die. All right. Let's explore what do we see. We see a crocodile and a buckler. Need me a large shield. Large shield is high on the, uh, the list right now. Every once in a while, I like to take a look at my inventory. I got two artifacts, which is great. No helmet. Um, because I can't wear a helmet, but I can wear a hat. So I'm on the lookout for a hat. My plate armor could be improved. My gloves are generic. Um, and my ring situation is meh. My resistance situation is also pretty wanting. Yeah, the alchemist hat is sweet. Love to have that. They need to put a conical sleeping cap in the game of some kind. I'd wear that all the time. Alright, let's just kill... Ah, man, another regular helmet just taunting me. Man. I got seven potions of heal wounds. That's just quite reassuring. It makes you feel good inside when you have this many potions of heal wounds. I don't know what the ceiling is on heal wounds potion, potions, like what the range is, but I feel like they can heal like 30 health or something insane. All right, let's go down to level four. It's a wand of polymorph and a hippogriff. We're gonna eat you, buddy. All right, yep, yep, dead Komodo mapping. Okay, just tabbing these guys down. Uh, let's pull this Komodo back up here. Push S to wait. I'm using the uh, letter keys to attack diagonally. N. It's very awkward to move using like, you know, um, Y and U and B and N as the diagonals. But I've done it so much in this game that I'm totally... Uh, that's how I play using the keyboard primarily. But remember, however, yeah, the number pad works too. Yep, you can just do that to jump around. Um, or you can mouse click it. However you want. Just make those precise movements. Ah, oh, crap, it's Sonya. Sonya is actually... can be really, really annoying. She's got draining, but she can also um, teleport so she can be hard to finish off. All right, so 
Let's throw some javelins at Sonya. Oh, and we're reflecting. Um, the poison tip darts. I'm going to use heroism just to get even better. Yeah, look at that. You were right, man. Those javelins, so good. Just aced her. Oh, actually, let me push A. Um, my finesse is down to 7%. I'll stop at 5. I'm going to stop training um, invocations when it gets down to 5. And use my experience elsewhere. And then when I pick up a more challenging god... Yeah, they are. I mean, just through a whole line of people. Amazing. Um, I'm going to use my scroll of identify to check out one of these three stacks. Three potions of flight. Very good. Very good. So we're making real progress on identifying eight-headed hydra. Not good. All right. So this is my spot for fighting this guy. I will just back over into this little corner so that nobody else can interrupt us. And I'm going to put on my evening star. I'm still heroic, so hopefully he gets here while that's on. He probably won't. Um, I'm going to go... Fin Oop. Man. Did you see that? I failed to use my finesse, and I am at 7% um, failure. I mean, that's why 5% is worth it. Okay, I'm just going to beat the crap out of this guy for that. That was rude, man. Failing to lose... Ah, oh, whatever. Alright, oops. Let's make sure we put our axe back on. I'm going to drop these scrolls of amnesia for now. I don't want these. Just look through the old inventory. See what's going on. That's a good question, how good the dex ring is I have. Um, I'll check it out. I'm going to take off my ring. It's plus six, which is quite good. But I will... Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's extremely powerful. But can you... I never really build up decks. I don't care about it too much. It affects evade. It doesn't... It's not raising my armor class or my shield. Is it, does it affect your your accuracy? With um, evade and hit? Okay, so it affects your accuracy. Well, that's worth it. Hey, bag of spiders. Let's get it. Hello. Aw, don't turn me to stone. That's so rude. Um, all right. They're stone. I'm stone. All right. Man, let's just kill these guys. Man, this guy's trying to stone turn me to stone again. See, after the Basculus is dead, his gaze shouldn't do anything to me anymore. It's a gaze. Right. Well, my shield is 23 now. I'll wear it. Plus six is so good. Magic, like one level of magic resistance isn't, in my opinion at this point, more valuable than what I've got. So, with plus six. All right. Let's see. And we're down to 6% with finesse. Almost there, almost there. Keep an eye on it. Man, another Basilisk. What a what a day for Basilisk. I'm going to just stare dance him so exactly when this happens and he turns me to stone. Yeah, you're 100% right on that. So I think I can... Maybe at this point I should take off the reserves and, keep, and use either resist negative energy or uh, magic resistance as my off... Um, or... You know what I mean? Um, I'll, I'll keep it here for now, but I'm definitely look, looking to upgrade rings. All right, let's go down. That's true. All right, I'm going to take off then my ring of magical power and throw on my magic resistance. And just keep scumming. Keep looking. We need some treasures. God, two scrolls from Enchant Armor. wonder if it's time to start buffing up the plate armor that I have. That's a good question. My armor class is actually pretty crappy. I mean, 
for me, anyway. I like to have an armor class much higher than this. All right, let's identify this three stack. Three potions of degeneration. What a treat. Okay. Back up over here and to one of these little dream corridors. Remember, you always want to just fight one at a time if you can. So I'm just going to slowly push tab. One of the things you can run into, and you've seen me run into it several times, there's a Hydra trying to sneak in who's seven-headed, by the way. Um, so we just have to be careful. And when he takes the place, I'm going to have to switch weapons. I'm going to use heroism, uh, heroism rather, and just see if I can kill him with just that. Yep, I did. Tab is fantastic, but Tab has also built in uh, tab is auto battle, by the way. Like, right now, if I push tab, it's going to path me toward one of these guys. The closest one. Ooh, do you see this? Crystal plate artifact from Okawaru. Yes. 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 This is what we're talking about. This is some serious stuff. Okay. Okay. Hey, plus two crystal plate of magic resist and dex plus seven. Look at my dex. I'm now a fast minotaur. Crystal plate armor, if you didn't know, is um, the strongest heavy armor in the game. Oh, okay, so, so you're right. Okay, so Fading was watching my shield rating. And because I have a dex of 24 now, my shield actually did go up. So crystal plate has a base armor rating of 14 which is four better than my plate remember base armor rating affects what they call gdr or guaranteed damage resistance all right and the or reduction and the guaranteed damage reduction of crystal plate armor is 48 percent whereas plate is only 39 percent all right so um this is fantastic also um Look at my armor class. I think it was at 20 before and it went up to 32. Am I right about that? Let me just do the comparison. Uh, I'm gonna chop these plants to give me a little path out of here and I'm gonna go up steps just to, just to have some fun. Yeah, um, look at this. I'm gonna put this plate armor on and yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. My my armor class was uh, disproportionate it was higher because of heroism. But anyway, my armor class in plate is 20, all right? And then in crystal plate, um, it is 28. And somehow my shield skill is also higher. Oh, because of the seven, the seven decks. The shield skill went, uh, was at 26 fading because of the uh, heroism. But anyway, um, this is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous. So. Just in this evening, I have gotten Artifact Crystal Plate Armor and Artifact War Axe, which makes this my five Minotaur Fighter just insanely powerful. Look at me. Um, I am primed and ready to go. So I really need to start collecting myself and making sure that I don't do something stupid and blow it. Wow. That is... I do need resistances. Yeah, that, that, that's true. I'm pure stats and, like, armor class and shields. Uh, a big shield would be great. Um, but let me say this. Okawaru is an excellent god for the exact reason that we just saw. He gives you two good abilities, which are heroism and finesse. But... He also just gifts you armor all the time. And you have so many different slots that that can satisfy. Trog gives you weapons, which is great, but you can only hold one weapon. And so, you know, it becomes to a point where it's very unlikely that you'll get a weapon better than the, the weapon that you're using. Not impossible, but less likely than getting an improvement on one of your armor slots. So I got some crappy stuff from Okawaru. I got a scarf. I got some crappy chainmail. And then he just gave me crystal plate. 
So I'm feeling quite nice. All right, so let's explore. All right, Basilisk, which means stone. So let's just get him out of the line of sight and then kill him like this. Get out of here. So guys like this, like these yaks that want to just do melee physical damage to me, I'm not even concerned with. I'm just going to tab the crap out of them. Um, this guy and this guy make this a little concerning just because of poison and stuff. So I'm going to do this and just kill them all in my little cranny. Remember, you're always looking for a corridor. Oh, it's Norg. Meh. Um... So Snort can go Berserk, which is the main thing that we're worried about. So I'm going to just preemptively finesse. Nope, can't hurt me at all. He's trying. He's trying. Dead. Alright. Okay. Got some cheese. Feeling good, feeling good. All right, so that is um, almost the lair. One more floor here, I believe. Let's just pull this crocodile up so we can get a better look at the land. Okay. All right, and let's see what's around here. No. Wow, ruined war axe. Well, no chance in hell that a blue item is better than my white item. Uh-oh, okay. This is actually really bad. Um... I'm going to go here. I'm actually just going to go out. I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to... Um, she's turned invisible. She could turn me into a pig. I hate to kill all these pigs, but I'm going to bring them upstairs and just butcher them. Sorry, guys. All those pigs are humans that have been shape-shifted by that named enemy. Um, I'm going to go back down and I'm going to pull her up. So there's the answer to the question that we were posing earlier, Fading. You can pull up a named enemy through a staircase like I just did here with her. Um, Kirky. Yep. I'm going to finesse and just destroy her before she turns me into a pig or does some other crap that I don't want to deal with. All right. So she's dead. So we're good. All right. So I'm still being careful. There's a four-headed hydra. I'm going to have some fun with that four-headed hydra. It's probably going to kill me, but... Um, I'll see if it gets out of control, but I'm going to do the experiment where I'm just going to fight it. No, he's already eight-headed. All right, so now we got him. We got him, but he got up to um, ten heads. <laughs> that was ridiculous. All right, so that was a complete greed play that you should never do in Dungeon Crawl um, because the game will punish you if you ever think that you're good. Um, but I, it was a four-headed Hydra at the start, so I felt pretty good. But the joke would have been on me if I died right there. Anyway. Ah, frack. Slime pits. I'm really getting some branches that I'm not pleased about, but whatever. That's true. The slime is affixed? A okay, I thought it was maybe random. It's just the shoals that's there's a possibility of not getting. Look at that elephant pushing me around. Okay. That's a reminder. My invocations just hit 9. And my failure rate with finesse is 0. So I'm going to push M. And I'm going to stop training invocations right now. And I'm going to look at my skills. I'm going to go back to training fighting. Yeah, I mean, I would have much rather seen the swamp than what I got, but that's fine. You can't have everything. Okay, remember what I said. Never fight in the water. You will regret it, unless you can fly, or you're like a merfolk or something, and you can swim, and you're not affected by um, water. Okay, let's kill a polar bear. I love fighting bears. I don't know what a polar bear is doing in here, but he's gone. Alright, let's rest up. Rest up, rest up. 
step back, step back. Come on, Komodo dragon. What, you can't see me? I'm the huge minotaur in the shining crystal plate mail. I'm not quiet. Actually, am I quiet? Nah, not really. Oh, okay. All right, let's kill all these things. Hey, don't freeze me. Um, I'm frozen as a debuff. Does that just slow your attack speed down and make you more susceptible to ice or something like that? Is that all that does? Okay, anyway, didn't matter. Didn't matter. Dead, dead. Wow. Preventing potion use is... Ooh, it's Urug. What you up to, Urug? You are... Dangerous. <laughs> she smells terrible. My God. Did it have to? Did you have to stink? Anyway, um, she's only doing physical damage, so she is not gonna be hard. All right, so let's hit her until she dies. Yes! Look at this. Okawaru gave me a wizard hat. Finally, I've got a hat. This is a magical evening. Magical evening of crawl. All right, so let's get this hat. Aw, oh, man, it's contaminated. Only when unequipped. Look at how good this hat is. It's an artifact hat. Resist elect, resist poison, resist negative energy. And it's plus one. It's, it's contaminated, which is a negative thing, but it's only if I take it off, and I'm never gonna take it off. So, also, can I just point out that it's called the Hat of Duck's Teeth? Um, I can only assume, yeah, that it's either heavily adorned with duck's teeth, or it's just made entirely of duck's teeth. Either way, fantastic. I'm gonna have to Google an image of duck's teeth, by the way. Are they like... I mean, they have that beak. Do they... They don't have teeth, do they? Or are they like flat, like... Anyway, that's that's curious. Educate me on ducks, people. Ducks have teeth? Anybody out there know about ducks and teeth? Anyway. Man. This is one hell of a run. Um, as a beginner's guide to the game... I'm getting a lot of really, really awesome stuff. And to be honest, Crawl, usually, usually, if you can survive long enough, the odds are in your favor that you're going to eventually get some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't played Wingspan yet. David was telling me about it a little bit. He says the art is awesome. What do you think? Do you like it? Five-headed Hydra. All right, I'm going to switch to my Evening Star. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to bash this guy to the ground. Remember, when you fight a Hydra... Wow, an average of three times a day? Crap, I need to order it then. Do you think that... Is it too advanced for the kids? Like, I mean, obviously, my wife and I can play, but... Uh, the kids are probably too little. Um, anyway... Um, I don't know. I mean, I taught the kids play Star Wars Destiny. I'm sure they could figure it. Well, we'll see. And they play Marvel Champions. Too little? Okay. Yeah, we could play more basic games. Um, anyway, I'm going to take off my mace. I keep this mace around just for Hydras. And I'm in the lair, so there's going to be a lot of Hydras. That's where they live, mostly. Ooh, here's a necklace. Well, my necklace is really good. Ooh, wait. I almost just went into this guy tabbing like a moron. Um, and I forgot. That's right. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll propose that as an idea for family game night. That sounds awesome. Alright, I'm going to check... Well, no, I'm not even going to check out this necklace. I'm going to wait to ID it when I get an identify scroll. 
Hi, wolves. Goodbye, wolves. It's a polar bear. Goodbye. Um, a merfolk avatar. That sounds awful. I can't move away. He's mesmerized me. Oh, my God. What a disaster. All right. I actually have pretty good um, magic resistance. Oh, well, you know what? You mesmerized me? Guess what? You're getting the javelin right in your face. Okay, well, now I can hit this guy. Huh. One guy mesmerized me to um, lure me in, like a siren luring the pirate ships in, and then this other guy blasted me back. Hilarious. All right, let's wait. Uh-oh, okay. I don't really like how this is going. Like, what's hitting me so hard? The, the Drake? I'm in water, which sucks. All right. Okay. Got it. There's some artifact stuff around here. That's cool. Ring, which I need big time. Box of beasts. I'm going to pick that up and see if I build up some uh, artifact scale mail. Magical axe. My javelins that I threw before. I'm going to rest. Oh. Komodo, fight this guy, get him out of here. Really need to get out of the water. Let me go fight on land so I'm not ruined. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, yeah, you're right. It could be something really nice. In terms of just resist gear where I, where I need it. Um, anything else that I want to do at this point... Um, looks pretty good. I'm going to drop the staff. It's amusing, but I don't need it. Okay. Um, Auto-exploring. Auto-exploring. Feeling hungry. Done. And that is the layer, everybody. So we have cleared the layer. We are completely pimped out with a plus 11 war axe, with four positive brands, a plus five medium shield, plus two artifact crystal plate mail that gives me dex, magic resist, a artifact hat, artifact boots, and the amulet of reflection. Really, you know, I want to get um, perhaps something better here that provides just armor class for myself. Or some resistances. Yeah, I need to build my resistances. Um, I could use a better ring here. Uh, I need to be able to see invisible at some point. Resist corrosion. Yep, yep, yep. But overall, I'd say this is a tremendous um, amount of progress that we've made. We are experienced level 14. We've got the layer clear. Um, yeah, uh, we have 30 armor class, 25 shield skill. We have 24 strength, a 24 dex 111 hit points um seven heal wounds potions nine teleport scrolls three scrolls of enchant armor for that large shield i want to pick up uh potions of flight all kinds of stuff for building up evocations i don't know what the new ring is um it's a ring of wizardry yeah Okay, so I'm going to drop that. That's good if I want to branch out into spells, but I probably won't. Um, okay. So, with that, everybody, I'm going to say that makes an excellent stopping point for me to get some sleep, and, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Super useful. Not really. Not for this build. Not for a six intelligence. But anyway... Um, thank you everybody so much for tuning in, for watching some dungeon crawl action. I will be back on tomorrow night resuming this run. If you're interested, please, um, check out all of the videos on YouTube. Subscribe if you like them. Follow me on Twitch. And otherwise, everybody have a great night. Good night, Fading. I will see you guys tomorrow.